Hey, Vlad here, devinsidery.com. Welcome to another video. Have you ever been in a situation when you want to use spaces in all your projects, but your team is being all weird and they want to use tabs instead? Shocker, I know. In any case, edit a config to the rescue. Let's get right to it. If you're new here, welcome and you should probably know that this is mostly a Scala channel however very often I'm also making videos about all kinds of software development related topics like this one so stick around maybe you'll also learn some Scala on the side come to the dark side we have cookies as you can imagine this video is about editor config an initiative and also a project started in 2011 to solve the so-called my indentation style is different than yours problem let's go straight to editorconfig.org and have a look we're gonna go through it real quick editor config helps maintain consistent coding styles for multiple developers working in the same project across various editors and IDEs the editor config project consists of a file format for defining coding styles and a collection of text editor plugins that enable editors to read the file format and adhere to defined styles editor config files are easily readable and they work nicely with version control systems by the way these days editor config is a well-known thingy so in most editors and IDEs you actually don't need a plugin it's actually built in before we go through the rest of the page allow me to mention that initially a couple of years ago when I stumbled on editor config I thought to myself what's the big deal most programming languages have a built-in native formatter or prettier or what have you so why would you use you know why would you need an extra tool well it turns out that even though editor config is a very simple tool it's actually way more useful than I thought the biggest reason to adopt editor config for me personally was the fact that at least in the Scala ecosystem our formatter called Scala FMT it only formats the Scala files or the .sbt files sbt is our build tool but since editor config as we will see in a couple of seconds has only a couple of very basic settings they're actually applicable to all kinds of files and you can also override these settings on a per file basis you do this by pattern matching on them with the globe patterns a simpler form of regular expressions in fact if we scroll down a bit we're gonna see an example of this so this is how a typical editor config file looks like it's a very simple ini format you specify that this is a topmost editor config file because you can uh, nest them very deeply in your directory structure and they will be merged and the closest setting is going to have precedence uh, also it's right top to bottom because there's no reason to read something like this bottom up and so um, the settings that are closer to the bottom are going to have precedence as well essentially this setting lets the plugin or the editor the IDE know that it should stop traversing the directory that it you know that it found the topmost file right so you basically say like for all files please use these settings for JS and Python files use these ones only for Python settings use these ones for a very specific make file you know use this one and so on and so on I actually had this scenario a couple of years ago where editor config came to save the day uh, we used to have a YAML file for Swagger. We were writing Swagger manually. Yeah, I know. So I was pretty much the only person on the team who had some plugin to format YAML files automatically, but it was still formatted according to my settings, which was just two spaces. I'm glad you asked. And so what happened was that the YAML file was actually already pre-formatted with four spaces. And so uh, I installed editor config and uh, I created the editor config file and I set it up in such a way that only for YAML files it would use four spaces. Because before that, what was happening was that I would go and add just one line and I would press save and then the plugin would reformat everything from four spaces to two. Let's actually see an example of this. Unless you're new here, you know that I'm using WSL2 and I'm running Ubuntu 20 or 4 inside of it. So what we're going to do is we're going to just create uh, I'm gonna go into my dev folder and I'm gonna uh, create a directory I'm gonna call it whatever and I'm just gonna open it with Visual Studio Code so uh, right before I started recording this video I changed my settings to pretend as if I'm gonna use tabs and the width of the tab is going to be eight characters right I also enabled the preview so that we see that uh, we're using over here tabs okay so if I start creating to create a new file let's call it main Scala I'm gonna do object main extends app and over here I'm gonna do print line hello world as you can see I have ridiculous tabs or spaces so I'm not gonna create a .scalafmt.com file because this will actually format uh, everything for me I actually don't, don't want that okay so let's actually run it real quick just in case there we go Scala main there we go hello world in just a second there we go so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna close this one I'm gonna clone a repo that I prepared that already has an editor config file that uses only two spaces all right, so I'm just gonna do gh repo clone them inside you. I'm using the GitHub CLI, by the way. I know I have a video about this. You might want to check it out. Okay, I call it example. All right, there we go. It's cloned in just a second, and we're gonna open it. There we go. I'm gonna open the main file, and I'm also gonna open my settings. 
Okay, as you can see, uh, no, please don't show again. As you can see, I'm still using tabs, right? Over here, you see uh, that I'm using tabs, tab size eight. However, as soon as I'm here, it switches to spaces two. By the way, I have no idea how uh, this is managed because as you can see, it didn't change my uh, my settings. It also didn't change my uh, my workspace settings. So I have no idea how it actually does this. As you can see, there are actually tabs over there. Maybe if I save, like, because it says that it's spaces two. So if I save, yeah. So if I actually save it, it, it actually reformats them uh, to spaces because of my settings so this is the editor config file over here right and these are the settings right so the character encoding utf8 end of line uh, i don't recommend you to set this because this is something that git should do for you and uh yeah because your teammates might be on a mac might be on a window so don't set anything right so in then uh, in then size two in then style space and everybody on the whole planet should have these two settings enabled so as soon as i remove this file my settings should actually go back to tabs all right so i'm going to go over here i'm going to say delete permanently there we go. And as you can see, uh, we're, we're back to eight spaces. Why are we back to eight spaces? It should go back to tabs. Where are my tabs? Tab size eight. There we go. Hold on. Let me restart VS Code. Maybe that's that's an issue. Okay, there we go. Tab size eight. And so as you can see, if I uh, if I remove these tabs and I press tab, I'm back to my uh, back to my tabs. This is probably an issue because the project that I prepared actually has this formatting file. All right, there we go. So if I do tab, I save, and no, don't show again. There you go. So it doesn't it doesn't mess anything up. Now this particular VS Code plugin actually adds um, a context menu over here, generate editor config. So if I generate it, this is how the default one looks like. Right, so as you can see, a couple of things have changed. So the end of line uh, is enforced over here. Let's go back to the website and let's see what else we have there. So uh, where are these files stored? We already talked about this. Uh, their file format details is basically an ini file. Uh, these are the glob patterns. You can go through them uh, yourself if you want. It's, it's you know it's very basic. Um, these are all the settings. It's pretty much all the ones that uh, that we have already used. So you don't need the plugins for all of these. For example, IntelliJ IDEA. However, if you are on Sublime or on Vim or on VS Code, you just click over here and you go and you see the plugin. As you can see, a couple of people already downloaded it before you. Let's go back because you can also use it as a headless tool. I've never used it as a headless tool. You can also use it as a GitHub action, which I also have never used it, right? So the GitHub action would enforce that uh, your code base uh, adheres to the settings in the file. And yeah, that's pretty much all I have for you today. I finally managed to make a short video. Yay. And for my frequent viewers, I also added a dot editor config file to my jitray templates. So take them for a spin. In general, take editor config for a spin and I see you in the next one. For now, as always, it's been Vlad, devinsideu.com. Don't forget to like this video if you did subscribe, if you want to improve the developer inside you. And if you learned something today, consider supporting me on GitHub sponsors or Patreon, whatever you prefer. And I'll watch my videos weeks and sometimes even months before everyone else. And most importantly, take care.